of more than a year so far. Yeah, okay. I'll be staying for another yeah. ten months, then I'll be back in Italy in Milan. Okay. And um, are you from Milan originally? Ah, uh, no, like a smaller town in the in the, in the Alps, in the mountains. Okay. Yeah. Very very nice. Close to so Domodossola, got... if anybody knows that. Uh, Usually, do it. Do it. Uh, yeah. What do you know, Domodossola? <laughs> it's the D. <laughs> Di Domodossola. Everybody knows that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a letter D <laughs> di Domodossola. <laughs> Explain that because obviously the phonetic alphabet in English, what is it? Uh, alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, etc. But in Italian, if you say the phonetic alphabet, D is for Domodossola. What is, uh, this, uh, people laugh when they say that, don't they? I think it's because is it like one of the only towns in Italy that starts with a D? Is that correct? Uh, yeah, there are not many, actually. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, if it wouldn't be for, for the that, yeah. it wouldn't be famous at all as a city. Okay. Oh, okay, right. So it's become famous because of that, yeah. Yeah. All right, good. So we've got we've got the Italian Italians in the house. Uh we we've got we've got Shaz, we've got uh I'm looking around at who else is we've got Canada in the room, we've got the UK. Um Magic Flute O, uh Blue Jumper, just to the to the uh, right of Federica, where are you in the world? Hi, my name is Francesco. Uh, Francesco. Io sono italiano. Good. I come from the north of Italy, near uh, near Domodossola, near wow. Lombardia. My my English is terrible. Sorry. No, no it's not. <laughs> Don't apologize. I work. I work uh, in Biella, in Piemonte, mm -hmm. and I live in Vercelli. Or now I'm uh, the founder of a community in Italy in Second Light. Uh, the, the name of this community is uh, Pyramid Cafe. And okay. now we are here in uh, Outspace VR. And some Italian uh, are here. Now I'm here for learn English. And uh, I, want, I want to tell you that uh, if you speak quickly, in English, uh, I don't mind. Sorry, but uh, is my is my problem. Okay, and yeah, yeah. Uh, now now we are uh, take uh, now 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 we. Insomma, se mi potete fare da traduttore, stiamo portando degli italiani qua. Uh, we're so trying to bring Italian people okay. here in outside VR. Okay. Cool. okay. I have a community too. It's called uh, Italian in Alt Space, and we are trying to uh, to bring Italian people here. So because we think this is an amazing instrument, so we want to use it to. Uh, um, to stay together, uh, talk, uh, and have meetings, uh, etc. So we Excellent. we want to use this uh, this tool, uh, this word, and uh, we think that VR is uh, a very powerful tool. So we are here to to know you and other people and talk about it. Great. That's that's fantastic. Good luck with that, guys, and um, thanks, Thank Francesco. And and yeah, good to have you here. So we're going to pass the mic over to your uh, your fellow Italian, who is Federico. And Federico, I'm, you you've got lots of experience in researching and also working um, or, or kind of talking about apps related to um, VR and reading in particular, and you are, um, a kind of a, a specialist in, uh, storytelling. And also I think you've got a kind of a background in Italian literature as well. So correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, but you are, you are I actually came across your talk in, in the Educators in VR summit uh, last month. It was really, really interesting. I thought we have to meet up with you again and get a bit deeper into how we could maybe use these tools to support reading. So I'm going to pass the mic over to you right now. And, um, all you need to do is tell me next slides and I'm going to navigate through and, uh, we're going to look at what you've what you've prepared so this is perfect Federico. thanks if we can thank get some love and some claps for him thank you for inviting me and having me here michael it's my pleasure to be sharing with you uh what i've been learning in the, in the last two years about using vr for uh, uh education 
And yeah, the topic of this hour is about building reading skills. And um, I would just want to make a, a first point is that when we think about skills and improving uh, the knowledge of a language, we think about reading comprehension and becoming better at understanding other people. But uh, one of the important things also when we try to improve the knowledge of something, when we try to learn anything, is the motivation, the passion that we have to do something. So when we talk about reading, it's very important to also foster and help, uh, especially students and young people, to become passionate about reading, to, to let them know that reading, for, it's something they can enjoy, that can be pleasurable for them, beside other kind of activities like playing video games or watching dramas and uh, meeting with friends. So, uh, next please. Yes, so, um, great, thanks Federico. Could you just move a little bit into the middle, because um, the screen's quite big, and also we can catch you on the live oh, stream, because if you look up, there's the, um, the, the, camera, the camera there, so let me just, um, hopefully that's okay. Uh, sure, I will. I will that's just stand it here. That's, that's perfect, thanks very much. Right, let's go to the next slide then. Yeah, and I love to quote um, the science fiction writer Ursula Le Guin, who said that uh, we don't think about that, but actually there have been societies that in the history of humankind they didn't use the wheel, but no societies that they didn't tell stories to each other. I mean, stories, it's a fundamental way of interacting with people and uh, build a relationship and improve the, the knowledge and uh, yeah, maintain society as, as it is. Next, please. Yeah, and when we think about stories, the, the most popular way of circulating them, at least until a few years back, was with the books on, on, on paper. I mean, after, uh, yeah, books were the, the, the major way we had to circulate stories and uh, move our knowledge from, from to other people uh, distant from, from us. Now we are here, we, are, we have VR, we have all space to, to do this, and we have television, we have digital media, we have ma many kind of media that are becoming more and more popular. But the written text has been the major media which we use to transmit and spread stories. But if we think about it actually, what we, what we call the Gutenberg parenthesis, I mean print, it's just a small part of how humankind has been telling each other stories. So since the, the origin of writing, uh, for most of the time we have been telling each other stories orally, not uh, writing them on paper and then circulating them. And now we are living in an era where something is changing again. So paper and books are still quite popular, but there are so many new digital media at the moment and so many new ways of telling stories. At first it was films, then TV and the radio, and now we have so many in theater, and then we have so many other kind of digital media and way of storytelling and interaction and video games are way of telling stories. So the landscape is changing again. Next, please. Yeah, and some researchers, some, some people are worried about this because we are not reading anymore as we used to do uh, when there were only paper books. Now there are digital books, there are so many distractions. Uh, we can watch TV or play video games, which is uh, watch videos on YouTube, which is much more fun than, than reading. So some people are, are worried that we are actually becoming more stupid and we are losing a lot of our cognitive skills because we don't read enough anymore. I just put here three covers of, of books. And the main worry is that reading is very beneficial for, for humans because uh, just, just here to mention one of the, no, next slides please, just to mention one of the benefits of, of reading has been found that uh, Reading for even just a small time, just six minutes, they tried in this research, can reduce the amount of stress 
much more than other kind of activities like going for a walk or playing a video game or having a cup of tea. So, for some, to some extent, people who are worrying that we're not reading enough might be right. Because reading is actually a very good tool that we have to uh, develop, not just reading skills and comprehension and understanding each other better in, in communicating, but it can also be good, next slide please, it can also be good in uh, to build and, and build empathy towards the other. Because if we read the fictional stories, for instance, we see characters going through different kind of happenings and events, and we see how they cope with the difficult situations or how they manage relationships. And we can learn a lot from this. So, but let's come to, to the, the main focus of, of this talk. Why reading in VR? Well, I'm asking myself, why not? When I, whenever I see a new tool and, and a new media, I try to understand what I can make out of it. How can I use it to, uh, as a tool to improve what I'm, what I'm doing and what other people can, can do with that. And we can actually exploit what are the affordances of, of VR. I mean, the things that VR is supposed to do better than other media. And from research, we know that, oh no, let, let go back, please. From research, we know that uh, in VR, we are more immersed than in, with other media. We feel more present. And this is a very key element. Being present means that we feel that we are part of a new space with our body. Like here, you, you're experiencing this now. The difference between, uh, it was uh, Michael and, and David who were talking about it before, the difference between um, a Skype call or a Zoom conference and a uh, meeting in an art space that here you are embodying an avatar. Uh, you have, even though it's not your own body, you created this avatar and you move your hands and you see the body moving. So this fact that you can see yourself with a different body in a space, in a space is creating what is called an embodied simulation, which is increasing the sense of presence. And the fact that you can also feel in a mediated way to have a body is actually helping and reinforcing how you learn. And is also working with the learning languages and when building reading skills. Next. So there, some companies, even major companies like HTC, have already tried to uh, create solutions for reading in VR. Here you can see that the Vive paper, which was um, first announced in 2016, it's now discontinued, so it doesn't exist anymore. But you can still find the developer kit online if you want, and you can experiment with it. So they were basically retaining the the paper support with a QR code, which is being recognized by the built-in camera in the headset. And through that, you can augment that reading experience while still having a feeling of paper in your hands. But actually, you are seeing in, in the virtual space, you are seeing the pages and the environment created around, the, around it. And here you, you have examples. Uh, then, it, then other solutions that have been proposed next, for instance, it's called the Chimera Reader. Again, just we put the page in a VR space. You can upload your own eBooks and read them in, in a different environment. Next. Then something more artistic. So not just any kind of space for reading, but something that is matching the atmosphere and the topic of the story. For instance, the poem, The Raven, by Edgar Allan Poe was uh, set in a room by the fire with a creepy painting on the wall and uh, a raven like a, being on, on the chair next to you. So a matching between the environment and what you're reading is supposed to increase once more the feeling of presence and the immersion that you are having while reading the text. Or something even more artistic like this fireboard, which is combining different ways of narrating 
uh, ballet and there is a narrating voice, but you can also interact with the environment. So here you're following the story, but at the same time you can move around in, in the space. Next. And you have successful, oh uh, yeah, this quiz games VR, another example where they uh, mixed kind of movie-like story with uh, some parts that you actually have to read on a support that you will find in, in VR. And next, very popular are becoming VR comics. Oh, this is one of the, of the best, the very recent, very, very artistic. It's called FPID. Uh, by Dream Methods, a very, very uh, skilled media studio in, in the UK. It's a poem, which is actually a sculpture, and you can explore the poem all around. Moving around it, you can read the text from, from different, pers different perspectives. Next. Yeah, as I was saying, comics are becoming very popular in VR. There are a few apps out there that you can use to read comics in, in VR. Some of them are just putting the illustrations in, in a 3D space, so but they're still 2D illustrations in a 3D space. But some of them allows you to move around the illustration and so be inside the, the, the space when you follow the story. Yeah, nice. But now I've presented you a few cases of how uh, t VR technology is being used for reading. But my perspective is a bit different because, see, okay, I presented you what can we do in VR. It's supposed to increase our presence, making us feel more immersed, and hopefully also increase the empathy with the characters so we understand better how what they go through. But my perspective as a researcher is to be critical about everything, basically. So I'm wondering, I'm asking myself, okay, but is it really so? I mean, all these new applications have been really studied and uh, applied and compared to normal reading and paper-based reading and to see if this is actually true, that we can improve reading, enhance reading and make reading more interesting by using VR. Next. Yeah, so basically I want to understand what are the psychological and emotional processes involved when we put uh, reading in, in the text in, in VR. Next. And a basic theory that uh, is suggesting that it is actually happening uh, is called the environmental problem theory. That is, if you think about it, um, all the sounds and the, the same perceptions that you can have for the, from the environment around you while you are reading, they can either make reading more annoying. Imagine you are commuting to go to work and you're reading on a track, very crowded train with the smelly people sweating beside you. These elements of the context may annoy you and make uh, you not being concentrated or, be not, f or not follow the story uh, well enough. But they can also be used in a different way as I was suggesting before with the, the case of the, the Raven, the poem by Edgar Allan Poe, where the environment tried to match the story. We can actually use the environment and the context to make the story more engaging and more uh, immersing. And actually in VR, we can control the environment. We can create the environment that we want when we are reading a text. Next. So just to give you an example, Imagine that you are sitting by the river and you have the sound of the, the waves you can, you can feel very close to you. And imagine that you're reading a story about a boat at night sailing in the waters and silently approaching an unknown island. So the fact of being sitting on the banks of the river and hearing the sound of the waves and the sound of the water is actually matching what you're reading about the boat sailing at night. So even though it's not exactly the same situation, but some elements of the environment where you are actually sitting, they can blend with what you, you are reading. And both the physical, the sensation, the perception that you have from the real world, that's why I was saying that the body can be very important for learning and for experiencing. 
So the, the, your bodily perceptions are blending with the cognitive processing you are doing on the text. And this together can make, give you an enhanced experience that you're getting from, from the text. Next. So we try to actually, this is the theory, but I want to prove that it can actually happen. So what we did is we tried an experiment, very simple, very basic. So we recreated the, the pages in, in VR. Uh, but for those interested, we created this using A-Frame VR, which is a web VR application, very, very useful to do many things. So basically we created the pages and we put the first chapter of Alice in Wonderland on the background of um, a 360 degree picture. So it's a static background, not like here where we, as we see people moving around. It was a very static background, a picture, 360 degree picture, so you can look around at a garden. So it's not exactly um, the setting of, of the story, but it could be because the first chapter of Alice in Wonderland you have Alice and her sister sitting in the English meadows in the countryside. And here you are in an English park. So somehow you are in the nature. So there could be a very loose matching, very loose connection between the, what you see and what you are reading. And what we did, we compared, we had the people read this. Next, please. We had people reading this in, in VR and people reading on, on paper. We did it in, in the Netherlands with, with some students. And we then asked them to report with some questionnaires how their, their experience was. Next. And what we found is that people who read in VR were more willing to continue reading the story. So we just gave them the first chapter and then we asked them also, among other things, do you want to continue reading the story? Do you want to go on and find out what happened to Alice and to the, the White Rabbit? And people who read in VR were more motivated. They felt a higher engagement with the story and they wanted to, to go on reading more than people who read on paper. Uh, next, please. And interestingly, what we found is how this is happening. So it's not just direct you just make something in, in, in VR and then people are more engaged and they, they like it more. How is this happening? Is that in VR, for what I was mentioning before, the fact that you can uh, see a different environment around you, so you're already shifting yourself somehow from the actual world to a VR space, a VR world. So this first shift from the actual world to the VR space, is the first step that is helping you, is encouraging you to do the second step required when you're reading a story, which is a kind of mental shift into the story world. So this increased uh, feeling of being transported into the, the story world is in turn uh, enhancing how you feel towards the characters, in this case, Alice. So the fact of feeling somehow that you are in the same, you're sharing the same world with Alice is uh, making you feel more connected to her, is making you understanding her perspective better and making understanding, make you understand what she's going through in a better way than if you read that on paper. And as a consequence, you are motivated, you feel the uh, interest to, to go on and, and find out more about her story. Next. Yeah, so this is the positive outcome of, of, of the research. But of course, we, we also found and we discovered more of the, the negative aspects. And you can actually see also from in, in, in this moment right now, I think the people there in, in the back might have a hard time reading the slides. I mean, I made them, I made the text pretty big, but I think somehow that the text is not sharp enough. Um, sometimes it's flickering. So there are of course, we don't have to be positive at all costs. We also have to understand and be conscious of what are the limitations and work to go uh, to overcome the limitations and, and build better experiences and better VR apps that can actually improve what we are doing. Next. 
So what we try to do next is to overcome the limitation of reading in VR so far, and but I hope that technology will, will catch up quite soon. And I'm pretty sure in a couple of years we will have VR headset that will, will be quite comfortable to read in. But now what we have is audiobooks, which are, which are a very good way of listening to stories instead of reading them. And I want to share with you a fact right now. You think of when I, before actually doing research on audiobooks, I was thinking, okay, audiobooks, who's using audiobooks? They're perfect for multitasking. I mean, I'm driving, I can listen to an audiobook. I have to cook, I can listen to an audiobook. So you can do something and then at the same time you can listen to a story. But actually then I found out, I've been digging in, into some market research and uh, some surveys who, about who's using audiobook the most. And of course, 50% of the people who are using audiobooks, it's because they want to multitask at the same time. But a lot of people are elderly who have a vision impairment of some kind and they find it difficult to read. They find that they have eye strain, they can't focus well enough on the text. So they just use it as a kind of radio drama. They, they just sit in the, in the sofa or in the armchair and they listen to a story. So they focus, they dedicate one moment to listening to a story. And I think that with the VR, we can make this uh, interesting and engaging for many more people, not only for those who have um, a vision impairment, but for, for many other people that could try and experience audiobooks for the first time, maybe, because they're attracted by the VR technology. So what we did is create an app based on the previous research and the theory that I introduced to you, so the matching of the environment with the story. And we get an app where you can actually listen to short stories and poems, but also novels if you if you dare, and create we created four different kind of environments to match macro genre and and kind of stories. So a, a foggy alley in a nineteenth century kind of London for mystery and detective stories, uh, underwater cave with a, a relic of a, of a ship for more adventure or pirates like stories and of course a, a space shift for science fiction stories and a more general relaxing environment that you can pair with, with, with other kind of stories. Next. Uh, yeah, so, so this, these are some of the feedbacks that we had for from people who, who tried it. Um, so they reported that it's a kind of intimate experience because actually you're dedicating a whole moment to reading and listening to a story. You cannot be distracted by notification of your mobile phone or someone passing by or some, some other thing because you are choosing to dedicate a moment to reading and listening to, to the story. But of, of course, it doesn't work for everybody. Some, somebody told us that, no, the visuals are too distracting. I can't focus on the story because I like to work look around and, and see the, the environment. Um, there was a video, but we were not able to, to show it for, for technical reasons, but you can, if you uh, type in, in, in YouTube story VR, you will find the, the, um, a showcase of, of the app, which is currently um, available in Milan in five public libraries, and we plan to, to, to extend it. It's a non-profit project, for, so if anybody of you is interested or if you are in touch with any cultural education institution who would like to use this, we are willing to share it. Uh, we didn't put it on the Oculus Store yet for, for technical problems. We, we hope we will be able to do that in, in the future. But please just text me and I would be much there. Uh, uh, very, I would very much like to, to share it with, with you. Uh, I think we're, we're done here. If I, we don't have the video. Next slide, maybe. There is no next slide, so I think that was the last one. Uh, yeah, thank you very, very much. Sorry, I was I muted. Did. I've committed. <laughs>
the the cardinal sin of uh, presenting in VR, and that's unmute yourself. Um, anyway, that was fantastic. Yeah, and really appreciate the love for Federico and um, and his application and, and everything that you've kind of worked on. So you said that it's actually available in five libraries across Milan. Yeah, it is. Okay, excellent. Good. So, I mean, um, what about your own experiences with reading? Because obviously, like, the, the consumption of content has changed so much in our lifetime, hasn't it? I mean, in the past, it was the newspapers, maybe you, in Italy on a Sunday afternoon with your parents. Would, I'm just going to stand over here a little bit uh, in the middle, sorry. Um, so you, you would maybe on a Sunday afternoon have the uh, your parents reading the, the, the Sunday newspapers maybe after lunch on a sleepy afternoon. But but now we've kind of been bombarded by news, for example, and, 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 and text that you could read and now that's changing with applications and now virtual reality um uh, do, what's your earliest memories of reading i mean is this something that you've always had a passion for personally well uh, next question i remember that as a kid and my mom used to tell me that a lot i love to read and i have memories of, of me reading as a child surrounded by books and mm -hmm. but then suddenly stopped actually well, i think i okay. when i was in middle school, I stopped reading at all. It was not interesting anymore for me. Uh, but I remember very vividly the moment when I started reading again. And I mean, I, and I like talking about this uh, reading in the analog world because it doesn't have, I mean, VR, it's a tool. It doesn't have to be the solution for reading. Mm -hmm. You can use that if you find the right way to, to make it work. Uh, but my memory of when I really started to read again it, I was bored during, uh, in, I was in high school and I think in my fourth year and I was bored by the last, the, the lecture because I already had my exam and so I basically knew everything what was going on. Mm -hmm. So I just started roaming around in, in the back of the classroom and I opened the closet and in one of the drawers I found a very old dusty book, a very thick one. I picked it up. And, uh, and I just started reading because I, I didn't have anything else to do. I, I think I didn't have a mobile phone yet, so we, I couldn't play any game or, or, or chat or look at Twitter. And it was uh, um, Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. So I, was, I really got immersed into that and the, the crazy things that are happening to Raskolnikov in, in there, how he's freaking out after killing the, this old lady. Uh, and that made me be, become passionate at first with the Russian literature and from that on I, I started reading again because I wanted to recreate that kind of um, engaging experience again. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So kind of revisiting the past. What about anyone out there? I mean, is anybody out here an avid reader, someone who reads a lot? You've got a big library of books. Yeah, Shaz in the back there. What, what type of stuff do you like to read? So I've been reading since, well, since before I went to uh, primary school. Um, mm -hmm. And I just, I don't know, I've, I've been, I beat my third grade teacher at a reading contest. And it's just been, <laughs> um, and it's, it's just been crazy since. Mostly, mostly fiction-esque things. Uh, my nice. favorite book of all time is a book called Aragon about dragons and magic. And it's just, it's, it's fun because every time I pick it up, I lose myself in it again. Um, mm -hmm. But I have probably close to 300 uh, physical books. Um, yeah. And then it's, I've got them all over the place. And it's, okay. it's, it, it's just amazing to lose yourself in. And do you think that you will ever stop buying books? Because as we go further and further down into the virtual rabbit hole with virtual reality and uh, kind of maybe AI suggested applications and stuff of what you should be reading, uh, they, they believe. I mean, what about the magic of having a physical book in your hand as well? So despite what Federico said, I think, you know, both of them are complementary, aren't they? Because if maybe we increase the... Um, for example, the, the enthusiasm for reading with books, then we can increase the enthusiasm maybe for consuming that same experience, maybe in a different way in virtual reality and vice versa. What about that, Shed? Something about having the physical book in your hand will always be engaging to me. Um, mm. But I also feel like with the, tr with the transition that's going on, with the physical book to then an ebook or audio book to now virtual reality, um, will help, will definitely help a lot. Um, I yeah. am 
definitely excited for, for some books in specifically in virtual reality to see the book actually come to life around me or with me mm -hmm. in a, a position of power, I guess. Um, but I'm, I, I'm very hopeful that the balance will stay simply because there's something about just sitting down in a chair, you know, on, on the patio when it's a, when it's a nice day out and just reading a book. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm very yeah. excited to see where it goes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think, Michael, you made a very good point that VR doesn't have to be the new way of reading, and we are going all to reading VR. What we are trying to do with uh, this um, Story VR app is that to offer a new point of access to the reading and, and to literature and to fiction for, for people who are, maybe are not readers. They don't, don't like reading, they didn't have the chance to get to uh, become closer with, with books and, and fiction. So maybe they can be attracted by the technology and they discover that there are so many cool stories that they can find on paper instead of uh, mm -hmm. on dramas and films and video games. Yeah. So it's just a new way of making people more engaged and motivated to read. And as we yeah. did in the experiment, they would start reading in VR and maybe then they would find out that it's even more engaging to read on paper. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Okay. And, and what about when Federico, like with regards to children um, and technology and reading, like how do you connect those dots? Because obviously, when you talk about storytelling and reading, one of the big things that I think about is the, the, that kind of romantic image of like, sort of historical you know, idea of uh, the mum or the dad sitting at the end of the bed at night reading a book to somebody, like a, a, their young child, for example. And what about the tech? Is it going to be that they're going to be putting an Oculus Quest on the, on the face of this two month old baby to get them to sleep? Uh, well, what about that with young children? Well, I don't think that would be the, uh, question. the case. <laughs> no, no, I like yeah. it actually because I don't think that would be the, the usual case. I mean, you won't be mm. reading to your children every night in, in VR. Yeah. But imagine yeah. you're going on a business trip and you are mm. 300 kilometers away from your child and your child is missing you telling her a story. You can just yeah. jump into VR, you can be in the same space with her, and you can read her a story. Yeah. That could be another wow. way of, of using VR to create connections between people and you know, doing the same kind of activity in a different, mediated way. Yes, yeah. Or maybe even, for example, I don't know, I'm just kind of, all these ideas coming up from your presentation. So, and, and what Shaz said about having a physical book in your hand, it was again, this kind of, I'm trying to connect the dots with what we do now or in the past and, and the future. So like the classic thing was you'd have a book or you buy your favorite book and maybe you go to a bookshop where that person, the author would be sitting there and you could wait in a queue maybe for an hour and get them to sign it and write a little mention to, you know, like, dear Federico, thanks for buying the book, lots of love. And, um, but maybe the future is gonna be actually you meeting that author of the VR story or the, the creator, the developer, in the virtual story ex itself. I mean, the, the, the opportunities are, are endless. Yeah, yeah, that, that's cool. And then yeah. another option that I've been thinking about is the actually augmented reality. So you can actually, mm -hmm. you're actually reading the, the, the paper book. And so far, I didn't find very cool applications of augmented reality books. I mean, they're just for children and you open the page and you just use your phone and you see the dinosaur moving out of the book. I, I didn't really see a convincing application of AR books, but you, you mm -hmm. could do much more than, than that. I mean, you can, yeah. looking at, at the page, you could have uh, dragons fly, coming out and flying around you or the narrator uh, looking at you and telling you things that are you, you're not reading in the book, but you're just listening to them through mm -hmm. the, the headset that you're wearing. So there are so yeah. many interesting things that could actually be done to uh, augment and uh, enhance starting from the materiality of media that we are, we are using so far. Yes, yeah, interesting. Okay, so have we got anybody else out there that wants to say anything about reading? I mean, maybe one of the uh, a book you've recently bought, or uh, I don't know if you go to library. Can we can we get any kind of uh, hands, claps, hearts for people who still go to libraries and want to talk a little bit about that? Because they're often interesting places to. Go, go and explore. We've got Louis at the back. Um, Louis, do you want to say anything about that? Because wh where are you in the world? Uh, I'm in Paris, actually. You're in Paris. And um, how often do you go to a library? Uh, at least once a month. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a big consumer of physical book as well. Uh, huge library. 
Uh, so, and I'm a, a huge fan of comic books. And uh, okay. when it comes to, to comic books, uh, I always go to a library because I like the exchange I can have with the, uh, the older of the library and he, he knows me, we can exchange on uh, what I like, he can advise me with uh, new comic books coming out and okay, you've read that one, so you, you'll probably like this one because uh, you know the drawing is kind of the same, that's a different story, but you'll see it's uh, quite different from everything you've got on, in your library. And that's what I find awesome uh, when you go to a library, because when you're going off, you, you make a connection with people and they know you and they can advise you to go out of stuff you've, you're used to read and uh, they can also give you uh, a way back in your memories because that one you loved uh, is going to advise you, uh, a one you're going to love as well, well probably. Yeah, and, interesting. And you're you sorry for the one. Uh, have you ever tried one of the apps for VR comics? Uh, I've tried uh, Quill, actually, uh, from mm. Oculus, yeah. uh, which, which I find pretty interesting. Uh, uh, you can go watch the story Remedy, which is really interesting. Uh, and I, I find that Quill is a new media between uh, comic books and film, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Are you um, and what about the social thing? Because we we said that a moment ago with the authors, for example, you can you you could a father or mother could read to their son or daughter, and they're halfway around the world. But what, um, Louis just said there about the social side of things. It's because this is kind of you know with libraries that can be very I guess isolating experiences that you go there, you find your book, you're hidden in between the aisles or the mountains of books, and that's that, and you're and it's quiet, isn't it? It's almost you're, you're discouraged to talk. But um, what about the libraries that you're in? across Milan are they I imagine they're kind of quite maybe uh, I almost imagine there's a cafe a bar people are talking it seems maybe a bit more of a vibrant experience open to this new technology yeah I think libraries uh, nowadays are transforming literally they're becoming more and some of them are actually changing their names they're not libraries anymore they become cultural mm. centers okay so because they offer all kind of services they have the maker space they have the uh, the media uh, the Mediateca, Mediatek, is it in English? Yeah, Mediatek. The media space, yeah. yeah. So you can do all kind of things and of course some of them, I think in Italy, not yet, but in Korea definitely, there, there is a cafe inside the library uh, mm -hmm. where you can bring your book and, and, and read. They're transforming into mm, new kind of, of social spaces around culture, definitely. And VR yeah. facilitates this, I, I think. So somehow, yes, especially this moment when nobody can go that can go out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I I've got another question for I think Lou in a second. Um, I didn't do this before, but we I've just allowed. There we go. Hand raises. Bottom right. If you look down on the menu, you'll see raise hands. So if you do have any questions, you can just click that. I think most of you are not muted anyway, so you can probably just talk. But if you do have a question for Federico, myself, or anybody else in the room, then just click that raise hand button and we can come to you straight also away. Also in Italian, but, um, if you want. Also in Italian. Yeah, any Italian questions? You, so we've got a few Italians in the house if you want to ask. Because um, we've got a few people here from the north of Italy. Um, we've got someone from near Domodossola. Uh, we've got a few other people as well, um, and we've even got Danny Salerno. I don't know if he is from Salerno, but um, uh, do you have any plans to expand Federico into the libraries of Domodossola? Uh, Domodossola, I, I have no contact at the moment. <laughs> I left okay. a long time ago. All right, good. Um, well, if we've got anybody out there who wants to uh, maybe, I mean, I, I guess this would give a good thing as well. Louis is maybe, I don't know, if you want to present this app through Federico to the library in Paris would be great. To, uh, I, I don't Absolutely. know if that's even possible. I'm trying to hook you up with everyone here. But um, yeah, look, look, we've got a question just come through. Let's, let's see who that is. And that's Danny. You've now got the megaphone. Danny, welcome. Good morning. Um, first and foremost, uh, Federico, gra mille grazie per la vostra presentazione. E, e il mio primo um, domanda è, è, è se esisterà l'opportunità per uh, presentare questa idea um, nei, negli Stati Uniti, specificamente in New York, perché io abito qua 
Eh, non esiste un'applicazione un che si potete vedere tutti i servizi eh, i sociali di, di, eh, con i visori di uh, vir realtà virtuale allora comunque uh, vi sto chiedendo se c'è qualche um, possibilità nel futuro per, per, um, per offrire questi uh, agli altri utenti inter internazionali sì uh... Il nostro è un progetto no profit e eh, adesso lo sto esportando qui in Corea del Sud dove sono, ma siamo aperti veramente a distribuirlo e a donarlo a tutte le biblioteche o agli enti culturali o alle scuole che vogliano utilizzarlo e arriveremo anche negli Stati Uniti, mi auguro. Ah bello, allora si sì, sentono sì, possibilità. Ah. Forse potremo co collegare dopo questo meeting, eh, vi lascio il mio indirizzo di email, eh, poi dopo torneremo questo Volentieri. offline. Grazie. Federico, scusa, posso sì. chiedersi una cosa in yeah. italiano? Abbi pazienza, certo. ma io ho anche finito di lavorare stamattina alle 8, lavoro in un corpo di polizia e non sono molto eh, lucido. Eh, mi... Potresti dire velocissimamente in cosa consiste il tuo, il tuo progetto in italiano, sinteticamente? Sì, I'm going to stop two seconds. So, yeah, we've had just a quick, quick just to summarize, Federico. So, we had a question here from Danny Salerno, I think he's in New York, and he basically asked uh, Federico, like, if it's possible to uh, bring his app over to the United States across the Atlantic Ocean uh, and, and get it in some of the libraries out there. And Federico said, yes, absolutely. So, that goes to anyone else out there who wants to, ha you know, try to uh, push forward their libraries and what they offer. So, that just summarizes uh, that one. And the question there, we've uh, got um, uh, a police officer over here. That's uh, Francesco, I think your name is. And he asks whether, because um, he's just got off, got off the night shift. Uh, we, so can we get some applause and some hearts and some smiley faces for him? Because he's doing a great job out there in protecting everybody and trying to keep everybody safe. So grazie di tutto quello che fai, Francesco. Um, grazie mille. But so, um, yeah, we, uh, and, and his question was to just summarize in Italian what Federico talked about today. So this is, this is great. We've got multi-language here. So Federico, go away with your, far away with your summary. Sì, um, abbiamo creato questa applicazione per realtà virtuale che funziona con uh, l'Oculus Go per l'ascolto di audiolibri in, uh, in realtà virtuale, abbinando a un racconto o a una poesia uh, un ambiente. Abbiamo creato per ora quattro ambienti diversi che possono abbinarsi a storie, alcune più horror, mistero, con un ambiente, una Londra fumosa del XIX secolo, oppure una vicella spaziale per storie più di, di fantascienza, una, mh, una grotta sotterranea per storie più d'avventura, dei pirati, e invece un ambiente più generico, un rilassante capanno sul fiume eh, per ascoltare racconti di, di vario tipo. L'idea è quella di, appunto, di eh, facilitare, rendere più ehm, coinvolgente l'esperienza di ascolto del, della storia creando, appunto, mh, combinando questi ambienti che fanno sentire l'ascoltatore, il, il, il lettore più partecipe della storia. E è un progetto no profit che adesso è disponibile in cinque biblioteche a Milano, però lo stiamo espandendo per offrirlo a chiunque voglia supportarlo. Ok, grazie molto. Che Alex ascolta, poi caso metti contatto in privato o comunque, perché comunque il Second Life noi come Pierani di Caffè abbiamo fatto un progetto molto simile e c'è una poetessa che ha la polio, abbiamo avuto praticamente impedita, di le, eh, impedita a uscire di casa e lei scrive delle poesie napoletane, queste poesie sono, sono lette attualmente nelle scuole, quindi... Eh, questo tuo progetto potrebbe sposarsi perfettamente con, con diciamo, il progetto di Carmen Auletta. Grazie per, la, per le informazioni, poi insomma, rimaniamo in, in contatto. Volentieri. Excellent. So, I don't know if you caught that, but we've got two very happy chappies here, uh, two very happy people. We're, we're making connections, we're learning about reading, we're learning about VR and education, it's all good. So, um, have we got a question, that Dan, Danny Salerno? Danny, what's your, what's your next question? Oh, sorry. 
Um, so I'm going to say this in English just for the others who are here in English. So I just cut the work in half for Michael for a bit. Um, from a technical standpoint, what are some of the adversities that you had to encounter uh, specifically um, when trying to make this application um, not only sustainable, but available for those uh, who might not be very tech savvy, I guess, uh, in, in the foreseeable future? Sorry, I didn't hear very well. The, the audio was disturbed. Can, can you repeat the oh, question? Oh, sure. I'll move, I'll move closer. So, uh, from you. a technical standpoint, what kind of adversities have you encountered in trying to make this application and technology um, available and sustainable in areas that currently are not? Um, you know, exactly, without, without seeing the, uh, without the pandemic itself, obviously, of course, being the, the biggest challenge for us all as a human society right now, but going forward in a very foreseeable future as well. Well, yeah, well, at first of the, we made the decision to develop for the, the Oculus Go uh, using a low poly style so that we can, I mean, we chose a headset that is uh, quite economically affordable for school, but it's not so, so expensive as uh, six degrees of freedom headset. And, um, and also the low poly style is not so resource intensive in terms of computational power required from, from the headset. So in the libraries at, at this moment, you, it works offline, so you don't need to be connected to the internet. So we now can manage to have uh, Oculus Go to run for uh, around three hours uh, on the battery, which is pretty good because they, uh, so they can actually use for a, an extended amount of time. And at the moment, we worked in close collaboration with the Milan library system. So we developed the project from, from zero with, together with them. So th going through with the needs and uh, having many meetings and, and workshop with the librarians. And I would say that the difficulty, the, the biggest difficulty is um, getting the help from the librarians, which at least in some of the libraries were not so used at using technology. And in those libraries where we could find someone who's already in charge of the, the maker space, for instance, or of some other uh, IT facilities, that would, was really helpful because, I mean, the, the, the headset were prepared by the central uh, administration of the, the library system, so they were really tech savvy, so they prepared the headset for, for everybody. But then even maintaining and proposing to the users, the, the patrons of the library to use the headset for this new service can be challenging if you don't have the, the, the right ecosystem in, in the library of of someone promoting it and suggesting it to the readers beside the normal paper books. So I, I would say that rather than a, a technological problem, it's more uh, an attitude uh, issue that, that we faced with some librarians that were not so uh, comfortable, I would say, with, with the technology and, and in promoting them. Yeah. Got it. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks, Danny. Great questions. Thanks for coming along. Make sure you add uh, Federico as a friend so you can uh, message him later. And um, we're going to stop now for a few minutes. We're going to have a quick break. There's a bar downstairs. If you just make your way down, we've got some uh, zero kilometer organic snacks for you to try. That's provided by educators in VR. Uh, the toilets are down there on the right, uh, your left. So make sure to, uh, uh, if you need to pay a visit before the next class, you can do that. So that's the one and only time I'll crack that joke in the next 60 minutes um we will um <laughs> thanks very much for it. that's reading done yeah like uh, check out everything federico's doing uh, we've got writing skills coming up later we've got speaking we've got listening we've got some cultural we've got uh, guests from dubai from uh, brazil from america from canada so definitely come along and check those out check out the calendar educatorsinvr.com sign up for those uh, events if you have not already and we're going to take a very short break i'm going to take off this headset and uh, i'll see you in about uh, three, four minutes. Thanks very much, Federico. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye.